Hey everyone, thanks for joining me back here on Publix Eye Outdoors. Uh, just wanted to throw a video together here for you. Give you some ideas on uh, camouflaging your guns. This is something that I've, I've dabbled with here and there and uh, just enjoy doing it. I've kind of got an artistic background and it's just kind of fun for me to, to do this kind of thing. So what I wanted to do was just kind of explain the, the reasons for, for camouflaging a gun, some of the things that you want to stay away from. I'm a bow hunter at heart. I'm not really a gun guy, but I've come to the realization that I'm not getting any younger. I'm not a spring chicken anymore. So one of the days is going to come where I cannot pull that bow like I used to. And uh, I have had some elbow issues and shoulder issues in the past, and, and some of that is kind of creeping in. The inevitable is coming. I'm not going to be able to pull a bow my whole life, so uh, obviously I'm going to have to transition over to to guns. But anyway, that's for another for another day. What I wanted to kind of go over here with with you guys, if if you never camouflage a gun, this is going to be kind of a uh, a little bit of a how-to, and then I want to kind of show you how camouflaging your 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 gun kind of help you out in a hunting uh, scenario. Uh, I know, you know, a lot of guys that uh, that hunt the, the western uh, end of the United States and stuff where you're shooting really long distances and stuff may not need to worry about it quite as much. But uh, it can it can become a problem if you have a sheen on your on your weapon uh, out there in the hunting wood. That's kind of the, the background that I'm looking at um, as far as why I want to camouflage my weapon as much as possible. Being a bow hunter, that's obviously something that I am really in tune with is, is keeping myself hidden. Um, I just wanted to start here by showing you a, a gun with a lot, of, you know, just your black stock and everything on it. This is a uh, Traditions uh, Vortec uh, muzzle loader. Uh, nothing fancy. Does have kind of this uh, this dull matte silver barrel. Uh, a lot of black on this gun also, but uh, I this is just a gun that I'm not going to paint. The other reason too is there's a lot of rubber on the stocks here. This is just one gun that uh, I enjoy the way it is. Now one of the things that I would say first off, and I know there's probably going to be a lot of guys don't agree with painting guns and that's fine. I understand it. I totally get it. There's two kinds of gun owners in my opinion. There are the ones that uh, buy guns uh, for resale value, historical uh, reasoning, so they want to keep those as, as pristine as possible and they put them in the safe and they keep them for their, their value down the road. Totally acceptable in my opinion. I can totally understand why someone in that boat would not want to paint anything on their guns. On the other side of that, there are gun owners that use their guns all the time. And I'm one of those uh, gun owners. Any gun that I have, I'm using and I'm not planning on reselling. It's, it's something I don't buy guns to resell. So with that being said, if you're planning on reselling your gun at some point, or even if you don't know down the road, I probably would suggest not doing it. But that's, that's totally up to you, and I can see both sides of the coin. The other thing that I would say as far as painting a gun is there's a difference between camouflaging your gun and refinishing a gun. Painting a gun is not a refinishing. You should never paint a gun to refinish it. And what I'm saying there is, take for instance, this old double-barreled flintlock shotgun, okay? Now, somebody may buy this, you know, or something newer, but still in the same condition. Say you have an old shotgun, like an old Mossberg, like my old Mossberg. It, it, all the patina and all that, all the bluing and is off of my gun, okay? And I'm like, man, I want to make this gun look new. Do not paint raw steel. Take it in and have it professionally redone. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Painting a gun for camouflage purposes is not the same as refinishing. So if you're thinking you're going to refinish a gun that doesn't have any bluing or any finish on it, Stop right there. Don't do it. All right, let's get back into painting aspect of. So the paint that I'm using here 
uh, is from Rust -Ol or yeah, Rust Oleum. It's their camouflage line, and you can see here I have quite a few different colors. This one here is a uh, ultra cover. It's a, it's a paint primer, and that was the only kind of dark green that I could find at the time. So that one's probably not uh, one that I'm using too much. So here you see four colors in this Rust Oleum camouflage, and then you obviously can see the green here. But I will use these earth tone colors and the camouflage lines are really nice because they are a matte finish. This is a clear coat, we'll get into that here in a minute. There's a lot of uh, history behind painting guns when it comes to uh, tactical and military use. For a long, long time, uh, painting guns has been around in the military with snipers, just uh, tactical guys uh, and things of that nature to, to bring the surroundings uh, into their weapon. I guess the first one that I'll start with here and everybody, you know, that has an AR really wants it to, to look great. And uh, this is my old uh, Remington AR that I bought years ago. And as you can see here, I have a tan and brown finish on it. And you're obviously seeing some black, um, you know, wear spots on this gun. Uh, you're definitely going to have some of that, but that just kind of adds some character to it. I think I did not put a clear coat on this when I did it so uh, that's probably why you're seeing a lot of the wear you see here that I put uh, you know just kind of like a desert uh, finish on this gun used a lot of tans if I remember right when I did this uh, paint job I took grass and laid it on there and then and then hit it so I would get some some striping in there you want to tape off anything that you don't want to have paint on that was basically the the first one that I ever painted. The ARs are kind of set up for that. This is a Savage 308. This is one that I just recently purchased and uh, I did a video on this gun. Uh, so if you get a chance you can go back and watch that. But this gun came pre-camoed. So the stock was already dipped and, and camoed in the Strata. So this is a really uh, detailed camouflage and it, it's kind of hard to grip. On my barrel is kind of a, a dull bronze, uh, so there's not a lot to worry about there as far as uh, coloring on, on the barrel. So I didn't touch any of the barrel, I didn't touch the stock, I didn't have to do anything with that. But the scope itself, I went ahead and, and painted this scope. As you can see here, the turrets are all black still, so I didn't want to get into my numbering. Any lines here that you may need that show you left and right, uh, you want to leave those um, exposed. A bubble here that I didn't want painted, so I left that. So you can do about anything you want when it comes to painting. I just wanted that scope to kind of match this gun. Alright, the next one I got here is a Savage. This is a 6.5 Creedmoor. Now the first time that I painted this, it turned out horrible. I got to be honest with you, I did not like it. I was looking for that old Vietnam tiger stripe look it looked terrible I had to redo it I'll show you a picture of it here so anyway on this on this particular gun uh, I went ahead and pulled everything off of the stock um, I took the butts off the stock I took the barrel and the, the scope off the uh, trigger guard all that came out and all I was left with was the stock. So I just, on this particular gun, I just wanted to keep it simple and just do the stock. I'm going to go through and kind of show you the pattern that I used to get this, this finish. Um, here in the Midwest, we have a lot of cottonwoods. We have a lot of uh, cornfields. When it gets later in, in the year, in the, in the fall and stuff, we have a lot of browns and things like that. So I try to... Uh, to match my surroundings as much as possible. That's what I kind of try to pull out of my, my paint schemes. I'm going to show you how I painted this gun. This particular paint job, what I did was I started with two colors. I started with a black and this olive green. So what I did first was I would go stripe. And you can make your stripes however you want and however close you want. But I went probably about two or three inches and, and just a, a six to eight inch gap in between each stripe okay did that on both sides did one side in between those black stripes I went with the, the green there again right in between 
my black stripes. So I've got a two-tone black striped, green stripe interchanging on the whole side of this gun on both sides. Once I got that to dry, then I went back and this is another part of this that is more of a preference thing. Whatever patterns you want to be around, uh, say you're in a lot of uh, pines, grass or whatever, you, you can do whatever pattern you want. The one that I used here, I went out in my backyard and just grabbed a branch off of a, a sapling tree. So I had these small little leaves here. Depending on what you want to say on this, uh, say you want your leaf pattern to be light. So instead of these blacks coming through, you want the tans to come through. Then you have to go tan on the bottom. Your lightest colors on the bottom and then go over it with the darks. You just got to keep that in mind. Your background colors, your leaf colors are going to be your background color. You want those leaves to be a light green then you need to make light green your background and then go over it with a dark. So then once I had my stripes on there, then I go back over opposite of what I had here. So this color is a light, I go over it with a dark. I had black on there, then I go over it with a light. Say I got all my black spots and I just take this and I just missed it. Just hit it once or twice. Not spraying, just misting. Whatever you decide to use, it's going to give you that pattern. Make it light. That's where you get that 3D effect. So once I did that, then I go through and I look at it and I say, okay, uh, this is a little bit too light, this is a little bit too dark. As you can see here, I've got a lot of pattern on the back side of this stock. But on this side, See how light that is and there's not much detail there, which is fine. That doesn't bother me at all. Uh, it's still pretty well camouflaged and it does have a lot of detail. Keep in mind when you're doing this, what you're, what you're looking for, step back from it. Once it dries and you've done everything that you think you want to do on it, step back from it, look at it, and you can see those imperfection colors. you got too dark here or too light here or not enough pattern here, too much pattern here, and you want to kind of balance everything out, you can still do that. So you just need to be mindful of what colors you need to do and go back and hit those. But that's what I use for this pattern on this gun. Real simple, and it turned out much, much better than what I had on there. So next thing I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to take these out, and I'm going to kind of set them into different areas in my yard and kind of give you an idea of what these look like in cover um, even if it's green or brown or whatever uh, just kind of see the difference that camouflaging your stocks and stuff can make all right guys well here you go i've got these set up against this uh log here and you can kind of see how that black stands out uh, against that that tan light bulb we're also in the shadows, so these are not going to pop quite as much as, say, if you were out in the sunlight. Now, obviously, you're going to want to be hidden in some kind of shadows, but that's kind of the reason that I like to camouflage my, my element out of having to go across a valley or a saddle or something like that where you have open terrain and you're going to be in the sunlight. So if I take this out in the sun, it's definitely going to pop a lot more than, say, one of these three other ones. A little bit. Now, I'm, my camera's about, uh, you know, about five, six foot away. You're obviously going to be able to see a lot of the differences up close. And in that shadow, you really can't even see them, to be honest with you. So sometimes those light colors are, are really good in, in both dark and lighter spots. These are in absolute sunshine. And uh, against this tree, you definitely can see them. Um, but as you can tell, you've just got different shades of lightness and darkness. So if I pull this one over here, 
into this area here. And you see that's probably gonna to blend in a lot better with that light grass than say right up against this real bright green tree. You can see that uh, egg that AR on the side really blends in great with that tree. You can't even see it. Uh, the 308 right next to it, the scope pretty much disappears. Uh, there's a little bit of sheen on that uh, on that stock, but uh, you you will have some sheen on plants and stuff too. So I'm not real concerned about that. The movement's going to be the uh, de the deterring factor on something like that. If there's movement with that sheen, then you could get in trouble. The black is not bad. I mean, it you can definitely see it up against that tree, but it does not stand out like as bad as I thought it would. Now, if that was all black, you would probably have a lot more of an outline, but where it's broken up with that barrel, it's not real bad. The 6.5 in the shadows there, it's kind of hidden. Uh, I'm gonna go over here. Sorry for the noise, I got guys over here hitting stuff with a hammer. There's a little bit of a, little bit of a sheen on that uh, cap that's on my scope, so. I'm gonna zoom you in here. honest they all do a pretty good job but that that black stock does stick out quite a bit more than the other three that AR up against that tree is, is pretty much you can't even see it okay I've got one more all right well we got a lot of traffic over here today so uh, we've also got the Sun but I don't know if you can see I can't really see in the camera very well if you can see those, but I'm about six, seven foot away from these guns in the in this brush pile. And they pretty much disappear. All right guys, well I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, think about subscribing to the channel please and give it a thumbs up. I appreciate that and uh, Hopefully this gives you some ideas on what you can do uh, with your just black stock uh, rifles and, and even handguns. You could do this with handguns too, but uh, hopefully this opens some doors for you. Gives you a little bit of uh, insight on what you can and can't do with, with some of these. And uh, just give it a try. Like I said, if you, if you grab the right paints and stuff, and honestly, uh, don't expect these finishes to stay forever. Um, they will have some chipping, they will have some wearing over time if you're using your, your weapons uh, like you should be. But um, yeah, it's, it's just a great way to, to blend in your, your, to your surroundings and uh, get them out there, put them up against different uh, vegetation just to get a good idea of what uh, what you like and what you don't like about your, your paint. But whether you need to go darker, lighter, whatever it may be. Um, but there's there's all kinds of different patterns, all kinds of different ways. Uh, there's a lot of, of YouTube videos out there on different ways of, of patterning your paint schemes and uh, ways of doing it. So I would recommend checking in some of those videos and uh, hopefully you can, you can uh, find something that you are really interested in and that will help you in your hunting season. So anyway, that's going to be it for today. Uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Give it a thumbs up. And we will see you on the next video. Stay safe out there in your hunts, everybody.